pessoal, boa tarde, bem-vindos. É, devido à presença da Eliane, nós vamos falar em inglês, que vai ser a, a língua da palestra. Graças a esse grupo de pessoas que estão aqui. Uh, uh, our meeting will be divided in two talks. The first one by Eliane, the Wiki Education Foundation. It will be a talk for 40 minutes. It will be followed by Dom Pershansky, which is responsible for the dissemination and education team of Euromat. And later, we will be open to questions, and then we finish with a coffee break for informal conversation. Okay, thank you very much. I, I just want to start by introducing myself. I am the director of programs for um, the Wiki Education Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization based in San Francisco, California, to connect Wikipedia and academia. And I've been working in this field for the last seven years. And last year, I oversaw an initiative that we called the Year of Science. Uh, to increase the availability of information in the sciences on the English Wikipedia in particular. Um, the Wiki Education Foundation is funded by large grant-making institutions in the United States. Our major funders are the Hewlett Foundation, the Simon Foundation, and the Stanton Foundation, if you're at all familiar with them. And these organizations want to increase the availability of information available on Wikipedia, um, especially in the science content area. So we kicked off a large-scale initiative to improve science information on Wikipedia in 2016. And it was the first large-scale initiative to systemically improve content in a specific area on Wikipedia. So I want to talk a little bit today about what Wikipedia is, about how our initiative worked, and the successes, and uh, what I hope can, uh, can come out of it as well in Brazil. So I think the first major question here is, why is Wikipedia something that universities and academia should be involved in? Well, the better question, I think, is where does the general public go to first learn about science? When someone hears an unfamiliar term conversation or reads about a new topic, this is usually where they go, the Google search box. And statistically probable, they're going to type whatever they want into this search box to find information. And where does that lead? Wikipedia. This is why it's so important to improve the availability of information on Wikipedia. So for those who aren't super familiar with Wikipedia, I wanted to highlight a few things that are kind of important to know about Wikipedia before we get started here. So everything on Wikipedia is released under an open license. And um, that means that it's a kind of copyright law where the creator will allow anyone to use their work um, with some or no restrictions without asking their permission. So in Wikipedia's case, this means that it's both free for anybody to read as well as free for anybody to use or modify with a specific set of attributions and with the assumption that you will also share the, uh, the, the, the reused version also under an open license. And another thing that's important to understand about Wikipedia is that while anyone can edit, Wikipedia has strict guidelines that everyone must follow to ensure the accuracy and reliability of the information. There's strict guidelines of what kinds of sources can be cited, and there's strict guidelines ensuring that information that is added to Wikipedia must be cited to the reliable sources. And this enables Wikipedia to maintain a standard of reliability and and a standard of um, accuracy that, that enables it to be something that people can use to find information. If you try to add something to Wikipedia and you don't cite it to a particularly reliable source, you're likely to get reverted. Um, so who will revert you? 
Um, there's about 80,000 active editors um, all over the world who volunteer for Wikipedia and who write content on Wikipedia. They monitor the new content that's coming in. Um, I'm one of them. Uh, several of us here are as well. And why we think this is so important is that we want to encourage good, accurate information to be freely available for the world. Everyone who edits Wikipedia is a volunteer. While some of us have staff roles as well, when we do any content additions to Wikipedia, we do so in a volunteer capacity. But the problem that with Wikipedia being written by volunteers is that the best coverage is of topics that Wikipedians in general are most interested in. This is a natural, normal part of the process. When you edit Wikipedia, you edit things you are personally interested in. I am a big fan of American baseball and craft beer, and so I tend to edit articles on those topic areas. Um, you see this reflected in the quality overall of Wikipedia. These are the featured articles, those of highest quality on the English Wikipedia. And if you can't read that font, the, I know it's kind of small at the bottom there, the, the highest number of those are in topics like military history, sports, and film and TV. Whereas when you look at things like engineering, chemistry, or math, the numbers are startlingly low. And what this means is that there's a real opportunity here for academia to start contributing with Wikipedia. There's also problems in what is covered. So for example, here is a list of the first few alphabetical names of the list of what Wikipedia considers notable science scientists from the United States. Here's the same list removing all the men. It's crucial that we work to fill these content gaps, both to provide those looking for information on scientific topics, as well as for young women looking for role models in the sciences. With higher quality of topic, higher quality of coverage of science topics on Wikipedia, including biographies of women scientists. So let me talk about the Year of Science, which was our initiative to improve content availability on Wikipedia in the sciences. So we started off by attending a lot of academic association conferences in the United States. Um, we were trying to spread the word about the Year of Science. We were trying to bring on board science professors in all of these various disciplines um, to, to find professors who were interested in assigning their students to edit Wikipedia articles as part of the coursework. And scientists in the U.S. were overwhelmingly excited about this initiative and eager to join our Year of Science project. The basic idea here is that students write Wikipedia articles for class. So they will take a traditional research paper that they do or the literature review section of a longer either analytical paper or some original research that the students were doing. And instead of just writing that uh, literature review section or the research paper for the professor, they instead write that content on Wikipedia for a general audience. And while the instructor provides the subject matter expertise, we at Wiki Education Foundation provide the Wikipedia expertise. So we are Wikipedia experts. We know how to contribute to Wikipedia. We know exactly how to guide students through this process. And the idea here is that the professors involved provide their expertise in the topic area to ensure that the content that the students are adding is accurate and valid. And we help the students figure out how to actually do that according to Wikipedia's rules. And so our support really enabled instructors who didn't know a lot about Wikipedia to begin with to be able to encourage their students to contribute content to Wikipedia as part of a class assignment. So just what kind of articles do students write? Here's an example of a new article that was created as part of the Year of Science by one of our students. Um, so a year ago, Wikipedia did not even have an article on annual versus perennial point evolution. And that little screenshot that's sort of hard to see on the left of the screen there that you can see, that's the length of the article as it is now. So this is the power of having students contribute to Wikipedia. You can take something that isn't, wasn't previously covered on Wikipedia and you can expand it into a fully fledged article with illustrations. Here's another example. This was an article on electron ionization. And the before shot you can see there, what the article looked like before our students started writing on it. 
And this is what's known on Wikipedia as a stub. It's a short article that has a little bit of information, but not really enough for anybody to get any kind of useful uh, coverage of the topic. And that long screenshot you see on the right is the after of all of the work that our students put into expanding that article so that there is now a wealth of information available on electron ionization. And looking back to that list that I gave you of the notable women scientists, our students also managed to expand 125 biographies of women scientists on the English Wikipedia as part of this initiative as well. So why would a professor decide to teach with Wikipedia? I mean, it's obviously about improving content that's available on the web in your subject area. But it's more than that as well. It's also about the student learning experience. Our faculty report that the students are way more engaged with this assignment than they are with traditional assignments. So for the typical assignment, the audience is you, a professor, just one person who's reading the assignment. And with a Wikipedia assignment, the audience is the entire world. There's 500 million people who use Wikipedia, and this gives students an opportunity to have a real-world impact with the work that they're doing for their class. As Dr. Peter Barker at the University of Oklahoma told us, more people have read the student output from this course than have possibly read my own 40 years of writing. And he's a history of science instructor. And it's really important as well to talk about the, the student learning outcomes, the key 21st century skills that we're providing the students as they go through an assignment like this. So earlier this, or I guess late last year, the Stanford History Education Group um, released a study that they had done evaluating the media literacy skills of middle school, high school, and college age students in the United States. And they asked to be able to determine whether things were real or fake, or how to trust and how to evaluate online sources. And the conclusion that they reached was that overall, young people's ability to reason about information on the internet can be summed up in one word, bleak. So I'm not sure how much this is also a challenge in Brazil, but I can definitely tell you it is absolutely a challenge in the United States. And I think this is a key point here. So, so we tend to think, we see students, they get a new phone, they're able to pull up an app, they can intuitively understand how to use it, and you know, some of us struggle to figure that out. And so we think that means they're digitally literate. But it doesn't. It means that they're digitally savvy. And I think this is, a, this is a really important point for us to think about, that just because students have been brought up with the internet, just because it's been part of their lives for their entire lives, doesn't mean that they know how to understand and evaluate information. It doesn't mean that they are able to separate the real from the fake, or it doesn't mean that they're able to separate what they should trust or what they shouldn't trust online. They can be digitally savvy without being digitally literate. And we, as part of the academy and as part of society, need to explain to students how that this happens. How, how do you learn how to evaluate information you read online? How do you tell what's real and what's not real? So I think this is one of the really interesting things at Wikipedia. So Wikipedia has been dealing with this whole fake news issue for 16 years now, since we were started. And the idea that we have here is you know, you need to be able to cite something to a reliable source. And Wikipedia has guidelines around what is reliable and what is not reliable for a source on Wikipedia. So there's a few key things that you're supposed to look for. Does the publication that you're citing have any kind of editorial board or a reputation for fact-checking? Do they publish corrections? Is there any sort of editorial process that goes into ensuring accuracy of the information that they publish? Are they independent of the source in question? So this is something where if you're writing an article on a company using a company's press release that they released about some uh, incident that they were involved in is probably not a reliable source for, um, for someone to cite in an article. Instead, you would look for news coverage. And, and you need to, in order to cite information on Wikipedia, you need to get a broad overview of all of the topic area uh, information that has been published and look for how are things balanced. If there is a controversial topic, how was the division in 
um, in, in coverage, you know, do 90% of people say one thing and 10% of people say another, then you probably shouldn't be citing the 10%, you should be citing the 90% because the information in that field has coalesced around whatever that 90% is saying. And so this is a really key point here, is we're able to teach the students these key evaluation skills, these key digital literacy skills that they need to be active consumers of information in the digital age. And students say, see that 95% of the students that we surveyed from our last term told us that media literacy skills was one of the things that they got out of this assignment. So the students are even recognizing that as well. We also asked students in a pre and post survey, what three adjectives would you use to describe Wikipedia? In the top, you can see informative is big, as is confusing, helpful, useful, and then obviously the big one, unreliable. And you look down to the post assignment, and what is flipped? It moves to reliable. I think this is a really key point here. Um, it also collaborative comes up, accessible comes up, interesting comes up. So you start seeing students understand not just how do you, not just what Wikipedia is, but how to use it effectively. Students are able to understand where Wikipedia is reliable, where Wikipedia is not reliable. Here's the thing, not all of the articles are good. Students shouldn't be relying on all of the articles, but there are places where Wikipedia is effective, which is a starting point for your research to get a broad overview of the topic, to look for sources that are the primary and secondary sources. So students shouldn't be citing Wikipedia in a paper. It's a tertiary source. I mean, I wasn't allowed to cite the Encyclopedia Britannica when I was in college because it's a tertiary source. And sometimes we lose sight of that fact that Wikipedia is an encyclopedia and, and as such, its role is to provide that broad overview of the topic and the links to the information where students can actually go to find those sources that they should be citing in their paper. And, you know, in process of actually writing a Wikipedia article, students learn how the sausage is made and they learn how to see and evaluate what goes into Wikipedia and they're able to better judge than how they should or shouldn't be using Wikipedia articles and they're able to understand which ones are good and which ones are not so good and not so reliable. Now another key point that we got out of the year of science in terms of student learning outcomes was the ability to translate the scientific knowledge that these students were getting into something that the general audience could see. So I think undergrads in particular are uniquely positioned to be able to do this. Um, they are not that far away from their secondary school where um, those dense scientific journal articles seemed incomprehensible to them, but they're far enough into their studies at the, at the college and university level that they are able to, to understand that information. And so one of the key roles that I think students can play is to translate that information back into readable information for the general public on Wikipedia articles about the topic. So this is a quote from a student at the University of Michigan who said about, uh, who participated in the Year of Science, and she wrote, I had to really think about what I chose to include in the article so that everyone could understand it and gain something new from it. It was a nice change to write something both more general but also scientifically detailed. I think this is a really interesting way of thinking about it, that you need to provide the scientific detail to ensure that people can understand and get the full picture of what you're talking about, but you also need to do it in a way that enables others and the general public to read it. It's that these sort of science communication skills that are um, so important to teach students sciences in particular. But it's also about putting science into context. So, Having an interdisciplinary understanding of science is really important for students as well. And to craft a Wikipedia article with an appropriate breadth and depth, the students really need to use their research skills and stretch them to understand the topic area better. So here's another quote from a student at the University of Toronto who participated, who said, students who want to prepare a complete PDA article on a bio-inorganic compound need to appreciate the biological, environmental, and historical context of the compound. 
we are forced to acknowledge aspects of the story that we may have otherwise ignored. And so I think this is a really interesting way of thinking about it, that when you're writing something like an encyclopedia article, you have to, you can't just focus on how does this particular compound um, work biologically, right? If, if you're in a biology class or environmentally, if you're in an environmental studies class, you need to really understand the interdisciplinarity of all of the different ways that information about that that compound uh, needs to be presented on Wikipedia and provide that sort of full picture for people. So I want to talk a little bit about the outcomes that we had from the year of science. So we supported about 6,336 students um, from the US and Canada, and 65% of them were women, which I think is a really incredible statistic when you think of the existing editing community of, of Wikipedia editors, which is somewhere between 80 and 90% male. Um, so our ability to bring about 65% uh, female students onto Wikipedia is an incredible opportunity to improve uh, the, the gender gap that we have in, in editors on Wikipedia. Um, those students improved 5,670 articles, um, including those 125 biographies of women science that I mentioned. They added 4.95 million words to the English Wikipedia, and that sounds like a big number, so let me just give you a little bit of information about what that is contextually. It's the equivalent of three and a half print volumes, the last print edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica. So it's an incredible amount of information that the students added on scientific concepts to the English Wikipedia during the year of science. And what's more important was in just that one month after they had written their work, their work was read by more than 304 million readers worldwide. So I think this is one of the really powerful and impactful um, elements of teaching with Wikipedia is that connection to the readers and the students, the, the work that they're doing then as part of their university curriculum connects with millions of people worldwide. So the Year of Science had a goal to dramatically scale the number of courses that we were supporting in the sciences. That's why we at Wikia did this initiative. Um, and we exceeded our goals in that regard. Um, but just because 2016 and the formal initiative has ended doesn't mean that we have stopped caring about science or that we are no longer interested in improving scientific information. And in fact, we are actually adding more science content in this current term than we did during any of the terms that happened during the year of science. And that's because 98% of the faculty who teach with us say that they would teach with WikiEd again. And so it creates a sort of a snowball effect, which I understand the irony of um, showing snow here in what is clearly not a, uh, a, a city that gets a lot of it. Um, but we do where I come from. And so the idea here is that we bring on new faculty. We're constantly adding more people. The, the people that we reached out to at all of those academic association conferences that I showed earlier, are some of them weren't teaching in during the year of science. Some of them wanted to have a six-month lead time before they integrated it into their assignments. Some of them weren't really ready to do it in a particular class. And so, but we made contact with them and we're still in communication with them. And so we're constantly adding new and more people in the sciences. They also connect with their faculty in their departments or their friends from graduate school and they encourage them to participate in their program in our program because they see the power in what they're doing and they see the student learning that's really come from, from this initiative. And we have our existing faculty who've already taught with us who continue to teach with us again. And so the impact of our program continues to grow. So I want to talk a little bit now about what we see as some, um, some opportunities to move this program globally and encourage, hopefully, um, more science dissemination in countries around the world, including Brazil here. Um, and so I wanted to, to focus specifically on a few key ways that you as audience members could help out with Wikipedia and the science information here today. Um, so the first one is that you could lease your own research under an open license. 
Um, and this is really important because one of the biggest challenges that we face as Wikipedia editors outside of um, our program is that most of us are not, no longer students or faculty at a university. And so we don't have that glorious login that you do to have access to all those peer-reviewed journal articles that are sitting behind paywalls. And we actually have to pay money to get access to that journal that you guys have for free. And when you, when you release your own research or open licenses, that means that Wikipedia editors all over the world can access it and can cite it in Wikipedia articles. So if you're not already releasing your research under an open license, I highly encourage you to do so. Ask your publishers, um, see, see what you can do to, to push open licenses for your own research work. Um, if you are an instructor, uh, consider assigning your students to edit Wikipedia. We've found this to be an incredibly powerful opportunity to, to really grow the student learning outcomes that come from your classes. You could try editing yourself. Um, Wikipedia is uh, certainly has some rules and guidelines that you need to learn how to follow, um, but the, the packets that were distributed give you um, information on, on how to get started yourself, and I highly encourage you to do so. Think about topic areas you know a lot about. Take a look at the Portuguese Wikipedia and see what the coverage is like and see if there's an opportunity for you to share your knowledge with the world. Um, but even if you think that Actually, editing sounds like a lot of work and it's not something you really have the time to do. There's a couple of um, other projects that I think would are really interesting and have a lot of potential, especially um, for those of you in, um, in research institutions as well. Um, and those are Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons. Let me take them one by one here. So first, Wikidata. So Wikidata is a online repository of structured data about people, places, things, um, and it has, it feeds into Wikipedia. So it underpins the, the information that's on Wikipedia. It's another project within the Wikimedia universe. And, and I think this is, for example, what I'm showing here is the Wikidata entry on, um, on dengue fever. And let me show you kind of what the structured elements that people add in here. So it has a cause dengue virus. It has a medical specialty under infectious disease. It has a certain set of symptoms. And so in adding all of this information in this structured kind of way, it enables not only information to be machine readable, but it also enables people to go in and query this. And it's all linked and structured together. And Wikidata is an incredibly powerful tool to um, spread information about the sciences and it's actually quite easy to edit you can just go in there and um, there, it's in Portuguese as well and I encourage you to, to take a look and start playing around and see what you can add um, about information that you know about Wikidata I think it's a really powerful tool and um, it's pretty easy to edit so I, I particularly like it a lot um, it is also available under a free license, so you can also query it for your own research if that's something that are, is, interest, uh, is of interest to you, too. Um, and then Wikimedia Commons is another project um, within the, the Wikipedia family. And it's a repository for media files like photographs that are released under a free license and thus can be used on Wikipedia. Um, and so there's a big opportunity here for anybody to participate who has a collection of um, physical objects in your research institute. So for example, this is a from a collection of minerals that the University of Arizona has. And um, some graduate students there got really excited about this project and about improving the availability of information about minerals on Wikipedia. And so they used the cameras that they had in their lab to take these high resolution photos of these very rare minerals that they had in the collection. And so then they went and added them to the Wikipedia articles on those minerals. And so think about what you might have access to in, in your research institutions that, that may be needed to be photographed. And you know, when you add images to Wikimedia Commons, that makes it available to be added to any Wikipedia article in the 294 languages that Wikipedia is available in.
And then finally, I would like to encourage you guys to organize a year of science here in Brazil as well. Um, so a year of science initiative would help enable more information to be available on scientific topics in Portuguese. And I think there's certainly a, a great and dynamic community here. And I know Joao is going to talk a little bit about that sh here shortly. Um, and I think that this would be a really great opportunity for um, to, to really spread the availability of information um, in the sciences uh, in Portuguese as well. Okay. And obrigada. Okay, so just a second, people, some technical challenges here. Okay, so hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. And it's a pleasure to have you all here. For those of you, which I think are the majority in this room, don't know me. I'm João Alexandre Pechansky, I'm part of the dissemination team of uh, the Research Innovation Dissemination Center for Neuromathematics, Neuromath. Um, we are in the same way you guys, most of you are, which is a structure in which research, innovation, and dissemination are taken very seriously. I understand many of you in the audience are from different RIDCs. So I'm gonna tell a little bit about the experience we've had with Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects. Of course, we are in a smaller scale than what you've seen from Liana, and I appreciate a lot your talk, I think you show us a way that or uh, experience from which we can get inspired and also envision ourselves in at some point. So I'm basically going to talk about our very local, very small scale perspective. On, but as we are talking about the internet, you'll see the numbers can get really awesome. So this is one thing that I like about considering dissemination um, as part of our work, um, considering Wikipedia as part of our work in dissemination. So just uh, for people who are in the audience who don't know what is expected from us, our IDCs, we are funded by PAPESP, uh, the foundation of research from the state of Sao Paulo. And PAPESP created these programs that are very ambitious in many ways and have very uh, serious ambitions for disseminations. So I brought some uh, quotes that I translated from, I don't know how to say that in English, digital that created us. So uh, the, 
the project that created us. So one is the development of the Brazilian society requires that leaders of the scientific community contribute effectively to scientific dissemination in their areas of expertise. And independently on their research focus, our IDCs must gain dissemination activities and contribute to improving scientific literacy in Brazil. And more importantly, dissemination activities must propose radical innovations to improve public scientific culture. So I would almost joke that uh, that's all about ambition. And of course, it's more than ambition is a real challenge because this is expected from us in very specific structural and institutional constraints. The first one, and Fernando da Paixão here, who is the coordinator of dissemination in uh, Neuromat, knows that way more than I do. We are in a country in which we could say we live in stable scientific illiteracy. If you look at the last report, for instance, from the o, uh, OECD PISA program from 2015, you'll see that the data out mathematics show to some extent that we are in, a we, we've been, not only we are, we've been through a very low level, systematic low level in scientific culture, specifically mathematics. Um, we are in a country with continuously insufficient, inefficient investment to public school system. I'm not giving you anything new here. We are, there was a recent poll from the, from Folha de São Paulo saying that people in general, people will uh, trust more religion and people who are from entertainment than scientists when they talk on the news. So people are, I would say, they show, they give us, they signal us with some strong evidence that they are in general not that interested when we speak. And one interesting aspect is when we started Neuromat, we did a survey on how many times mathematics was even part of the news making of five large Brazilian newspapers. And we could find in five of these newspapers, Folha de São Paulo, Estado de São Paulo, o Globo, and so on, only eight pieces on mathematics, and we had just won the Fields Medal, which also says we uh, we don't they don't pay attention to us, and in general, which is also part of our job, there are very little incentive for professors and researchers in universities to get involved in programs of culture and extension, which. Uh, which research on Wikipedia and scientific culture would say um, in general in Brazil, but the, I think that's also true in other countries, many scientists when they want to know something they would rely on Wikipedia in English and not to what we are because Wikipedia in Portuguese is strongly affected by these structural and institutional constraints that I'm showing to you. And of course, everyone in this room that is dealing with work and dissemination is dealing in a way to go through these constraints. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be trying to dissemate. I'm not giving these as, okay, no, let's all go home and do something else. I think we need to understand what the challenge is. And I think, and I'll make the point that tr through this project, through Wikimedia project and other understandings of how in the internet can be a powerful resource for dissemination science. Between these constraints, we can actually have a st very specific and strong impact, which is basically what is expected from us. So who are we? Who is the us I'm talking about? So this is the big boss, Fernando da Paixão. Then there, I have a list of bosses. I'm the last one here in the bottom. And on the other column, it's the team then many of them working on disseminating um, science, especially neuromathematics, which is what we do through Wikimedia projects. Interesting, and I think this is a very important point for especially for those who are in research institutes or RIDCs, is that there is a particular program from FAPESP that very few research institutes take advantage, and I know this because every year they have funding remaining, which is very bad. 
we shouldn't allow this, which is media science program or the science media program. And most of our fellowships are coming through this funding. It's a hard to get funding, but we found a way through it. So if you are interested in understanding how you can get funding from this particular uh, program, you should talk to us and we can help. We now understand how it works. And we also have some undergrad fellows who are part of the University of Sao Paulo. So what do you do in Neuromat? I would say Neuromat, some, as I said, Neuromat gets inspired a lot by Wikidu. We started before, we started, or at least we, I started the program before I knew Leanne in 2014. I said, okay, Wikipedia is really cool. Let's just send to the media uh, a release saying that we are embracing it. Then we release the thing to the media. And then I realized that it's not even about voluntarism. You also need to work a lot. So we started very voluntaristic. And then now let's say we have a job. And I will show you some evidence of the job we've done on content production, uploads, uh, GLAMS, GLAMS stands for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. I'm talking here about partnership with cultural institutions, uh, education programs, outreach, and I uh, brought the topic process thinking and research just to, s uh, just to give you some uh, insights about how this could actually help us think about what the science of communicating science is and we've had some papers and presentations in conference about this so wikipedia content production i'm going to show you a table of what we've done this is publicly available on wikipedia this is a page a user page on wikipedia in portuguese that lists all content we've um, worked on in different strategies, part of the education program, part of it in interactions between communicators that we get from uh, this FAPESP program streaming. And other times we have events like the one we had yesterday. These events are called an editathon. So this explains what we are. And then what you have is a very long list of content that we have improved. So the first column is the context in which the content was improved, the entry we improved, whether we created the entry or we improved the entry, where the content was coming from, when we did it, what was the size impact. This is measured in um, K bytes, whether we use or not uh, image. This is the yes or no signal or no, that you are read. And then the last columns are about impact. So this is a, this is a table that only summarized work done in 2016. And you see it's long. We've worked on 168 entries. We've had a total of inputs onto Wikipedia in Portuguese of around one uh, 0.8 million characters. We don't count words, so I'm giving you uh, the character figure. Uh, we've worked basically on mathematics, neuro, neuro the broad understanding of what neuroscience is. Also, uh, animal veterinary, because of a partnership we've established with the School of Veterinary Anatomy here at the university. But let me show you one of the very good entries we've produced. So I'd say media, the mean. This is an entry that already existed, but that we have really improved. You can see that it's considered, does it wish, okay. So you can see it's considered by Wikipedia itself one of the best entries on mathematics because it has a golden star. We are, I'm very proud to say this, probably now the best, uh, or not the best, but we are 
the, Wikipedia, the, the Wikipedia language that has the most featured articles in mathematics, which is really cool. But as Liana said, that's a general problem. We've had many featured articles. This is something we work on with a partnership with a professor at the Institute of Mathematics. It has GIFs, it has the formats, it's, it's considered to be a content that can be useful for people who are in high school, then they will read just the beginning. People who are um, grads, then they'll read a little bit more. Grad students and then advanced academics, then they go to the bottom. We are basically offering the PhD thesis on the mean for anyone who is interested in this content. Um, we have, as you can see, many, many references from recent papers with something that is, we consider that is important. Though you can see we also mention history of the mean, so you'll see something in the 18th century. But we try to bring the literature from science that is the most recent that is available. There is a very intense focus on creating images. So if you click on these images, you'll see that at the bottom, it will say that this is coming from us. This is an image that we have produced for the content. And we produce both static and animated images. So this is, again, one that is animated. That is an, an understanding of how you can calculate the mean. And especially on this project, which is something that I, especially myself, very interested in, is we are producing the audio versions or the spoken Wikipedia versions of this content because we've had the data, which is data from the Ministry of Education, that innumeracy or the lack of understanding or uh, illiteracy in mathematics for people who uh, have uh, disabilities in sight, I don't want to say sight, disability, reigns at around 95% in Brazil, basically because there is no standard language for mathematical formulas. And we've partnered with school, at least one school here in Sao Paulo in order to generate content that would be interesting for students who have this kind of disabilities. So if you are really into it, you can actually listen. I'm not sure it's going to work here. No, it only works on my computer, but we have the whole entry uh, read by one of our students, especially the formulas, which is the key aspect of doing this reading because otherwise students wouldn't have access to it. And we've been trying to improve the way we are doing this reading. But in general, oops, let me go back here. We've done work on more than in this particular project last year, we've done work in um, many, many entries. We've had, we've, as I said, we've added 1.8 million content. But more importantly, what I really think is the key aspect of doing this is the impact you expect in readership. This content that we have included is not read by 10 people, by 200 people. We are just with this very specific content. Mean is a big concept, but we are also creating some crazy stuff, mathematical stuff on, let me show you one really bizarre. Uh, okay. This is the most bizarre one that I can. Um, we are doing some very advanced entries, so even in English, so this one, Cadeias estocásticas com memória de alcance variável, stochastic chains, memory of variable length. This is again something that we have created. I would say no more, no more than 20 people every month read this entry. I don't know how they get to it. <laughs> I'm always surprised to see that we have readers for that. But in general, to sum up everything we've done, we are reaching around uh, 700,000 people uh, every semester. Of course, we are not at the level of Wikipedia in English, but that's a lot of people, especially when we are pre when we are presenting this kind of concept. I don't know what they do with it, which is one of the key aspects. I hope they they might do it. They copy paste 
to the to the final papers that you actually have to grade. At least they're going to be of very high quality, that I can assure. But it's really powerful. We are providing very good content for 700,000 people, which is part of what I expected from us. That's why I think this project is really nice in this sense. We've also worked a lot on uploading content to the commons. So let me show you our page in the commons. The commons is another project, as Liana explained, that is um, a media repository. There are, I would say now, almost 40 million um, medias that are available. And we've done part of it. So at first, you see our scientists. So this, that's really interesting when we're saying about the gaps in Wikipedia. You have generally pictures for most of scientists from north of the planet, what we call the north of the planet, and very little from what is south of the planet, which is kind of interesting. Though they, they have entries, so many of our uh, scientists, and I'm sure scientists, oh, we didn't include the picture here, many of the scientists in your institutes have entries you didn't have to create. They are famous, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So they should have pictures. And this is part of what an encyclopedia is. But more than having the wall of fame of our scientists, we have at this point included content on many, many uh, areas of illustration events. But you also see um, elements that are now illustrating like the entry on mean or we've done uh, pictures of anyone that has encyclopedic uh, relevance that comes to one of our events. So we are the Wikipedia picture of Kawambul. He didn't have one, but he came to one of our uh, events and then we took a picture. Now it's there. But again, talk about impact. This is a tool that calculates how many people go uh, onto the page where you have an illustration that you have uploaded. So this is just the data from February last month in 2017. We have had around 6 million file views of this content we have uploaded to Wikimedia Commons that is now being used onto Wikipedia and other projects. So when I'm saying we are reaching a new scale with the internet, this is the figure. I don't know, which is very different from our experience when we do education programs. Just giving you that, it doesn't tell you what people are doing with the content we are producing, which is fine. I'm happy people having access to the mean, a good quality entry on the mean and then expected, expecting they will do a good job with the content we are providing. This is, we don't have the back and forth process. Not always, sometimes we do when people complain of some content we are producing, that happens. But in general, it's just there, which is okay. It's a public good to some sort. So, Part of the content we have uploaded on the commons is uh, set up in a process that we call the GLAM. GLAM again stands for Gallery, Libraries, Archives and Museums. These are programs that are rooted on partners, on, that are grounded on partnerships with cultural institutions. We are currently working with two museums from the University of Sao Paulo. What, is, what does it mean to work? Is basically we go there and we upload other content. They have, mag we have magnific um, collections. And these collections, and you know that as well as I do, are basically inaccessible to many of the people that should be having access to it. So we are working currently with the Museum of Veterinary Anatomy and what we are doing is that we upload all their collection progressively. This particular museum has been uh, a harder work because they didn't even have formal inventory. So we are in the process of organizing their inventory while we upload very or 
very high definition pictures that get a lot of prices because the, they are the best of the best. This is what we are to some extent. So this is an ostrich skeleton, it's huge. You can see the details, it has a lot of educational value and it's been used. Then you have all the metadata on the content that you are produced and you have a lot of prices. Then it says that it's coming from the university. People are free to use, but they have to attribute the content to where the, con the content is coming from. So authorship is always respected, though it's free uh, to be used. And then you can see where it's, it's being used a while ago. This was even the, in the front page of global Wikipedia, just because it's a marvelous picture. And it's all this list is all the end, all the pages on Wikipedia that are actually using the particular image. And we are uploading hundreds and hundreds. I've just done a partnership uh, with Celio, who is here, is part of the team, to upload 100,000 pictures from the uh, Museo de Piranga. They already have the content. The museum is closed, but they have the content. Then you can have the museum uploaded for people to have access to it. So another case, this is a different case, but I really like it as well. We are uploading the Museum of Mathematics here from the university, but we are doing it a little bit differently from the Museum of the Veter of Veterinary Anatomy, which is we are not just focusing on creating images that can illustrate entries, but we are developing what are called a museum for downloads. So if you go, for instance, to a category, these are the uploads we are doing, you have all, or I would say, most elements that you need to recreate this museum in the countryside in Brazil or anywhere you'd like to have it recreated. We are providing the pictures, the movies, the content that you can have that is part of the museum here that people could actually recreate so that people could recreate the same museum. This is an ongoing process. We will have recordings of the classes from professors here uh, of the university. But you can see if you have a particular interest in knots, mathematical knots, you have, this is uploaded as well on the specific Wikipedia entry in English and Portuguese that could be of interest. But this is, a pic, this is an image that we are producing. And we are also, unfortunately, for Wikimedia Commons does not allow us to, to put the 3D printing configurations into the repository. But at some point, when we have objects, we'd like to provide the parameters so that someone, if they are have access, and they will have access to a 3D printer, they can print the object that is part of the museum. This is what I call again a museum for downloads, which apparently could provide a different understanding of what an educational museum could be. And you can, we have this kind of content in many, uh, in many topics. Let me see another one if I can find it. Mm, okay, not finding what I wanted. Okay, so apparently sand piles are important for mathematics. I didn't know that before starting this project. So you could actually organize a full class given this content that is being provided. And again, which is very important, we are providing the instructions. It's not only about providing the image, but also what is there glued on the side of the objects. So this is a GLAM we've been involved with, or we are working on two of them. We've already secured three other partnerships. One is the museum, um, the Paulista Museum, the Museum of, the Histo of History. We are doing the Museum of Geoscience, and I'm glad you brought the mineral in your slide. And we are doing the Museum of Education and Toys from the Department of Education here at the University of Sao Paulo. Then we have um, very small educational programs. As Neuromat, you can see I'm really committed to this. So all my students do Wikipedia stuff, but I'm a professor in journalism. So it's not really part of Neuromat what I ask them to do. But just to give you some 
idea of with the, what we do. So we are very concerned about training people to be able to do what we do. This is a training we had uh, last in December. These are really basic skills. We had 18 hours of training and we can create Wikipedians. It's not, and I think we can even do it with way less hours. That this was an advanced training. So this is um, a project that's called Wikiversity and we upload all the content that we used in order to provide this training. So if you are interested, you have the access to all the class that we did, including the slides and how we do it, or how we did it, why we did it, and a PDF version of the material that we are giving you today. Another thing, as I told you, we are, we love Wikidoo, so we try to be them. So uh, Liana showed you very quickly some um, hands out that they produced that are given to students and structures as a way to easing process of editing on Wikipedia. We've done our first. It's not on mathematics, neither statistics, nor uh, probability. It's on veterinary because of a very good relationship we've had with the Museum of Veterinary Anatomy. We've done some work with them. This was revived by a professor who is a Wikipedian. He's here, Valerio Melo. And this is basically providing again, a way to reach to be able to cost from being a reader to being an editor. This is content that you can use in class if you are in this particular topic. These again are pictures we have uploaded for GLAM activity. And this is exactly, at least I hope, what uh, the Wikidu does. We give credit to using their platform and it was nicely given to us by Leanne and their team and her team. And we are also very involved in outreach. Outreach means providing again safe bridges from people from going through the process of being a reader to being an editor. We had, for instance, yesterday an editathon and Editaton is an event in which you invite people, as we invited yesterday, to be able to learn how to edit. And these are very easily organized. We had, so for instance, a poster um, that, is, that was uh, circulated on campus. And we had around 20, or I can give you the precise number, 24 people who and then the idea here is to provide a training so that people can again go from being a reader, everyone is a reader, people use Wikipedia a lot, and becoming an editor. There are other ways of doing outreach, just like what we are doing. I would say this is an event of outreaching and presenting what we are doing. We are also involved, this is the last topic in what we do, what we wiki do, and one thing that I think is really important that again, the Wikidoo experience inspires is you need to reflect on what you're doing. I think it's really important in the process of transparency to provide the tools and the resources or the process thinking of your output. So we have created a blog. It's not a blog on science that is done, that is done or the hard science that is done in math is an institute of brain theory and stochastic chains with memory of variable length, whatever that is. We, this is a blog for science communicators. Um, it's called Tra Traço de Ciência. And it provides an understanding of not only the projects on Wikipedia, we do also other projects. So we have a project on providing communication for health, but a lot of it is about, for instance, Liana here is about thinking through what we are doing and showing where we are failing, showing where we are succeeding and translate stuff that is of very high quality that comes from abroad, Spanish, English, and having a reference so that people can more easily have an understanding of how they can actually use this very powerful resource, in my opinion. 
And another thing we've been, as a professor in journalism, we've been working a lot on understanding the scientific aspects of communicating science. So far, we've had one single publication, but we have submitted many more now that we are more consistent. So this again, Wikiversity, it's a page where you can create uh, a space for research groups. So this brings our very own, very single publication, this one, which is called uh, Wiki Education in Journalism. But we also have access to the projects we are working on. So if you click here, you can actually read the project we have submitted to FAPESP in order to start what we are doing. And I'm really happy if this can actually help you because as I told you, this funding streaming exists. Y last year, only five people applied for it. And out of these five, we account for three. So people are not using this money that uh, can actually be used for projects like this, which is too bad. And more interesting, we are uh, just make reference to two papers we've written that were presented in conference and now are submitted to uh, journals. One of them is sort of an understanding of a paper that was written by three Iranian researchers who, uh, well, at least one of them in the US and two others are in other countries, in which they have made a really interesting paper on how the level of scientific culture in a country has an impact on the quality of science entries in Wikipedia. And it's intuitive, so the worse your scientific culture level, the worse your Wikipedia. But as we are mathematicians, or I'm not, but I'm among mathematicians, I know correlation is not causation. So they are not making a causal argument, they are making uh, a correlational or argument, an association. So I like to think of the reverse perspective, the better your Wikipedia, this is what we are doing, the better your scientific culture. And I really believe in that. Another paper we've done, which is sort of goes in this way, we've done um, more robust control of the impact we've had on scientific entries, we've improved, and we've compared our outputs of readership to the expected trajectory of readership in scientific entries in the same category with that of, but that we didn't improve. And though there is a steady trajectory of readership across time in entries that we haven't improved in readership, when we improve, you have a very different pattern. At first it goes very high because a lot of Wikipedians are actually looking at the work you are doing. We have a community of active editors in the Portuguese Wikipedia of around 6,000 people. Some are way more active than others. Some log sometimes, not other times. But then you skyrocket, so an entry would have when we just touch it, review it, edit it, um, like an 800% increase, then it goes down. But the steady um, pattern of readership is always greater than what you would expect, even given Google search mechanisms that when you increase content would actually make it more visible on Google. So this is kind of the research we are doing on this. But more importantly, and this is why we are here, I think, I don't want you to give the impression that we've solved the problem. This was a very long process. I would say when we started this, or I was alone in the process in 2014. I was really alone. People would make fun of me. Fernando wasn't there, I don't think would make fun of me, but people was, were really making fun of me. And now we, we've built, I believe, something that is really powerful and you can do it. And when I say you can do it, if you are interested, is you can do everything we are doing. Content production, you guys have expertise in your areas. These areas, I assure you, is in very bad shape in Wikipedia in Portuguese. This be improved. 
there are many strategies that we can adopt to improve. You can upload to the comments your figures in research maps. Uh, if you have access to a museum, your uh, we've been uploading, for instance, now the three D visualizations of the models in mathematics that are being done by our scientists. You can create your education program. You can do outreach and you can do research. And not only you can do, but we are really ha happy to help you. Not only myself, the team in Neuromat, but there are Wikipedians, or more generally, Wikimedians that really can be there if you are interested in going through this way in dissemination. And that's it. And um, now we are open for questions. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, my name is Gabriela. I am from Unicamp, from uh, the Brain Ars. Uh, I, I don't know the, 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 the acronym in English. So we're from the Brain Cepid, RIDC. And uh, I was wondering how many, you said you started wrong, but how many people do you have now? <laughs> how many people joined you along these years to create all of that? Just to know, you know, how feasible <laughs> all this is, because it seems quite a lot to be achieved in three years. Is a, is a lot. So maybe have a round of questions, maybe three questions, then we can. Thank you. I have sort of a technical question: Is, is it possible to? We have a, a 3D display in Wikimedia Commons. Apart from in Wikimedia Commons, is it possible to have 3D display, or you must produce a, a MPEG or something to to, to show 3D things? You must make a movie of them. So, and is it possible to have um, uh, some interactive media? Actually, not only play pause. I, I never saw it in Wiki. Uh, I use a lot uh, Wikimedia Commons, but so far I, I haven't seen it yet. Hello, uh, congratulations for the presentation. It was very exciting. I'm Danielle, work with dissemination at the Center for the Violence here um, in USP. And I searched for some terms like human rights, for example, is one of our issues. Um, and in Portuguese, really not much content. Do you think? Um, and some terms like uh, proced procedural justice, uh, violence, violence against minorities. Uh, it's a very delicate uh, theme right now <laughs> in the world. <laughs> um, and um, I don't know if you have some considerations about this uh, content. And if do you think uh, Wikipedia can contribute to fight against fake news? Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to start just answering the very direct question. I think Liana can actually be way more helpful to to other questions. So I told you that we started. I started alone, 2014. And then more than actually having a team, I had a group of friends who are Wikipedian volunteers. Uh, Wikipedia, as I told you, have active editors, but more than having active editors, they organize, self-organize in groups and chapters. And these are all volunteers. So the first time I actually had an impact in something Neuromat was in the in the middle of a conference in which I said, okay, no, we are having a wiki thing. So we had an editathon in a conference. It was organized by uh, this um, uh, Wikimedia in Brazil user group. So we have, now I'm part of it, but <laughs> now we have s at least four people here 
that are from them. So it started like that. So more than I was still alone, but then I had volunteers, and then I, I, and then we grew through this Fapest streaming. So now we have two dedicated fellows from Fapest who are part of the world, but anyone in Euromat is trained as a Wikipedian, though they don't work directly to it. So I would say we are four doing this work. Most of the work that I've shown was done with only three people. And now just recently, as part of the unified uh, fellowship program of the university, we've had five undergrad students 10 hours a week each who are, out, who are very importantly working on the metadata in the GLAM partnerships. And I'll leave the rest to Liana. Um, in terms of having 3D displays or interactive um, elements, so one of the, I would say, challenges of Wikimedia Commons is there are limited numbers of file types. Um, and, and I would recommend, I, I mean, I think a video is probably the best way to go about it right now. Um, that being said, there is some work being done in the technology space around trying to figure out ways to have more interactive elements. Um, so my answer to that would be mostly stay tuned um, and hopefully that, that that would be coming in the next uh, little bit. But um, that's uh, overseen a, a little bit of sort of clarification point. The Media Foundation is an independent nonprofit organization that runs Wikipedia and they deal with the technology aspects um, and uh, we are we at wiki education are independent of them as well and so uh, we don't we obviously work very closely with them but I don't have sort of the most up-to-date information on the specific technology elements yeah here let me have you say that into the microphone so uh, apparently have a, a Moodle plugin for Wikimedia, right? So so people can can show uh, Wikimedia content inside Moodle, for instance. Uh, but I have seen it most of the times. It's possible to have plugins where you can extract content from Wikimedia and show it elsewhere. Yes. But not in the opposite direction. It doesn't yeah. have to do anything. Is it, this is it related to uh, uh, copyright issues? For instance, if, if you have a plugin for, for showing uh, YouTube, Personal, reliable, might be broken or something. Yeah, so Wikimedia Commons is an image repository of images and multimedia files and things like that that have been released under a free license. And so all of the content that is on Commons needs to be under some sort of Creative Commons or other license or in the public domain or things like that, um, which really is a very narrow subset of, for example, the video files that are available on YouTube. Only a tiny fraction of them are available to be added um, because of the licensing issue. But the licensing, the, the free license does then enable um, platforms like Moodle to pull in uh, content from Commons um, in that way. Um, and then in terms of the third question around sort of the, the human rights and violence toward minorities and other topic areas like that, um, that's certainly, I think, something that uh, I, I'm mostly focused on science here today, um, but, but Wikied does a lot of work as well in content areas like that. Um, and we have done a lot of work um, with classes, with student editing on content uh, subjects like that. And it certainly it is a bit more delicate and a you know a bit more of a challenge to avoid the advocacy issues in that um, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia and so one of the big considerations when you're looking at topics like that is to ensure that you're not pushing for a particular point of view but that the advocacy element comes from just ensuring that there's information out there available about those topics and so um, it's a little it requires a little bit more careful sourcing to ensure that the journal articles you are citing are not biased but um, aside from that I definitely think that there's certainly um, a lot of work to be done on all language Wikipedias on around topics like that Hello, my name
name is Denise, I'm a journalist, and I work in UCI at São Carlos. And congratulations, because I think uh, to spread this idea for the world, I think it's, incre it's fantastic. And it is, is it possible to send this presentation for us by mail? Okay, because I think it's a good idea uh, for us to, to bring this idea for our institutions. And um, uh, I don't know, but I think there, there are some uh, initiatives like Pine of Science, Pine of Science. Uh, it's a global movement, yeah, and it's voluntary. A lot of people are doing that in, in the world. And I think it's possible to involve this community that are trying to organize this kind of event for science dissemination. I think it's a good idea to uh, try to attract these people for this kind of weak uh, project. I think it's possible to think about something like that, joint the forces to science dissemination. I think it's a good idea. Okay? Thank you. I can, yeah, I can <laughs> take that a little bit. Um, so yes, certainly, I think Joao and I would both be happy to upload our, uh, our slide decks to Wikimedia Commons, which is another uh, uh, another way that we, Commons can be used there to, um, to, to share files as well. Um, I definitely think there's a lot of room to partner with a number of organizations um, that, that are doing work. We at Wikiad, um, actually, we have a full-time staff member who's devoted to establishing partnerships, and most of what we do partnerships with is academic associations, but we've been working um, as well with um, the, the AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, um, which is obviously the big science communication uh, institution within the United States and uh, we, we found that these these partnerships are really fruitful to add that sort of you know there's the the research and teaching and community service as sort of three elements for tenure decisions and um, in, in Academy in the United States I imagine it's something similar here um, and you know to, to really bring in that community service element as well as the teaching element that Wikipedia assignments can be incredibly powerful for that um, so we have established partnerships with organizations like the American Chemical Society is one of our official partnerships, and we sign memorandum of understanding with them to, to have us collaborate with them to ensure that more information chemistry can be more widely available on Wikipedia through our program. So I, I definitely think that there's a lot of room, and, and you know, I think the, the work that Joao has done here in Brazil and his team um, to do the partnerships with the cultural institutions, I think, speaks to, you know, another way of doing more partnerships. And I think we've only, you know, sort of as a, as a global movement, I think we've only just started scratching the surface of what kinds of partnerships we can do to collaborate, that there's a lot of groups out there doing work on important topics like science communication, and I certainly think there's plenty of opportunity for us to do more in that area. Okay, and again, of course, I'm more than happy to upload the content on the comments and then share it around, of course, this part of what to do. But then when Liana was answering I think Daniela last time, then something occurred to me. I said I wouldn't talk about my uh, work as a professor, but then I have, it's not exactly on topics like the one you were thinking of, but it deals with human rights um, in 2014 for the three years of what I believe is a mit the military coup in Brazil, though this is controversial sometimes in, on Wikipedia, some things want to, some people want to call it a revolution. The conversation about this yesterday, but I do believe it's a coup, and and it was a military dictatorship, so no uncontroversial here in scientific community. But then I ask each one of my 193 students in 2014 to write an entry on one of the people who had been killed or disappeared during the military dictatorship based on the content that was being produced and we had it firsthand from 
the National Commission of Truth. So each one of my students were act was actually creating the entries that now you can read under this very long list of people who were killed. So most of them, so let's see, I wouldn't call this one we didn't create, but let me see once we might have created. So if you look at probably Carlos Alberto Zanirato, if you look at the discussion, you see it's part of my class. So every year I do education program generally related to human rights or sociological topics. So it's just, as Liana said, a process of understanding that more people are going to actually want to have a say. And I can actually show you what happens when you are on a on page that is that powerful as Wikipedia is that people know it's powerful. We in science have an understanding, okay, it's unreliable, I won't work on it, but people are using it. So if you look, every entry on Wikipedia has a history. It's a process of peer reviewing in which you can see the edits that were done collaboratively. So if you look at the history of this particular entry that summarize the work of students. If you look at this one, at some point, an editor that didn't log in just said, and it's gonna be in blue here, why and Dilma on the list? So this happens. So you might have come over to one, Dilma was a former president of Brazil who was very active in the struggle against the military dictatorship. We are dealing with the power of communication. So when you are dealing with topics like the ones you're dealing in uh, NEV, you are dealing with this kind of struggle. But one aspect that I think is really interesting about Wikipedia that makes it a very different social media comparing Facebook, even Twitter, Instagram, then they have others now, Snapchat and whatever that is. <laughs> but I understand sometimes I'm on Snapchat for my students, but I don't understand what this means. I hope it's good. But uh, on Wikipedia is there is a tendency to reach consensus. So people who are serious about it want to create an encyclopedia. This is an encyclopedia. And we need to come up with our consent way of writing stuff. And there was a recent paper on, I think, the Harvard Business Review. Uh, I think it's two or oh no, more now, four or five months ago, in which they compared the ideological uh, content or the content through an ideological lens on politics in the US, in which, for instance, I remember they compared the language that was used to describe the Republican Party in the US. Wikipedia was created in 2011. Of course, there was an entry on the Republican Party. It was leftist. People that firstly engaged with Wikipedia were probably leftists. But then, curiously, there is a sort of consensual argument about how to present this content that is historically being shaped so that now when you read in English the content that is on the page of the Republican Party, uh, it's probably a content that would have the agreement of both the leftists or both the people from the right or both disagreements. It doesn't really matter, but it's, uh, it's neutral. I think that's really important. This is an encyclopedia. And scientists are overwhelmingly, let me say, uh, overrepresented in an encyclopedia. This is the general language that is expected here. So though there might be a discussion on whether or not the, the uh, earth surrounds the sun, there is a general understanding that comes from the scientific community that will be on an encyclopedia. This is why I think uh, Wikipedia belongs together with science. Just look at your phrase.
hope I'm not blowing my boat of questions. Uh, just one thing, how do you operate? Apparently you have a, a, a robust team of people. Apparently you have a, a robust team of people, a lot of people uh, that, that collaborate with you in the uh, 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 science divulgation, information divulgation pr project of these uh, 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 research. Uh, are I really acronyms and something that tickles in the brain sometimes? CEPID. Okay, so how does it work? How is the interaction with the scientists? For instance, yes, how many of these articles uh, that have been produced uh, uh, within your CEPID, how many of these are, are being actually written for, uh, uh, by the researchers of the team? And how many of them have, in fact, been uh, uh, written by people of your team and then just revised it by the scientists? And by chance, would it happen that you have some art that have not been revised at all by the scientists? Because most of the scientists, they are evaluated. We know that. They are evaluated by uh, published papers, but not in Wikimedia, not in Wikipedia. Right? So how do you get them? to actually collaborate and actually how many of them are, has say a percentile, 10 percent, 50 percent of the people involved in research are actually contributing to your project and you have a, a sizable uh, team like I counted more or less like 15 people working on this? General team, okay so this is good but my team is here it's my boss and me so you see and we asked, uh, so it's not uh, actually the same uh, uh, position. So we heavily depend on the engagement of the scientists in actually producing content. It is not that they don't want to do it. It's because that that will be a slight contribution for their careers if they do it or not. And you know that, that they have 24 hours and people have to make choices. So. How do you make them to make the choices for diffusion? Okay, so I'll start and maybe I'll ask Liana to show you a good platform that can actually help you, especially in education program, but let me tell you, tackle directly what you're asking. So I, I, as I told you, I've been alone uh, as well. There was a moment in this Neuromat team in which there were only two people. It was me and the coordinator, but then we found a way to grow, especially with the FAPET, FAPET streaming stream of funding for media science. But it's a universal. It's a universal program. So uh, twice a year, you can apply. Anyone can apply for it, and then they will select. Um, there are some caveats on the way to reach it, but I can help you. I'm glad, more than glad. Yeah, I can. <laughs> we can help. It's a kind of weird program. The fact that so few people actually have access to it is that it was written a long time ago when there was apparently strong science journalist schools. So, for instance, here at the University of Sao Paulo, there was an institute of science journalism like 20 years ago. There was one, I would, uh, I would say, at UNESP as well. They have both disappeared. But then the, in the program line, in the statement, you have to head, if you're a candidate, a very particular training of science journalism that no one offers in Brazil. No one. Which could be a problem. Not even Labjor. They sort of do it, but it's not exactly because we compare the program. It's very detailed. It's not offered. But then what we did, and that's why I've been, or we've been as a group, able to have so much success in applying and getting the, uh, the position, is that we've made a partnership with very cool guys in Canada who are part of the World Federation of Science Journalism, and they don't offer exactly what FAPESP, not even them are able to <laughs> offer exactly what FAPESP 
uh, expects from the position because it has to be a 90 hour long course and their course is considered a 76 hour long course then we add to it so we training so that people in the course of uh, of the fellowship have the Canadian certificate and another certificate that we provide so it's a pain but we've managed it and we are happy to share how we've done share to the commons the projects we've written to be a project that is both practical and theoretical so you have to have research and have to have practical outputs but we can do it hmm? no it's free I, I believe some point they're gonna charge us it's impossible <laughs> it's completely free which is really cool they send us a certificate from Toronto and then if you go to this project at Papep so it's a joint project joint fellowship from Neuromat and the University of Toronto <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> it doesn't have to be a journalist okay so it doesn't have to be a journalist but I think it has to be some uh, someone from the communications so this doesn't need to be a journalist but the the program was created for journalists and I've heard people from Papep saying oh not so, uh, we need more people from communication to apply to this thing so they want us to apply and they say oh you guys are not applying I say it's impossible to get the funding so do something realistic and then but anyway even in realistic we are able to make it happen so the problem that you are taking ta tackling about how I get the science involved I would say don't get the scientists involved because again I'm just kidding but I we organized this editathon in 2015 I said okay let's let's try uh, making the scientists edit themselves and then I had the director of Neuromat the vice director of Neuromat and two of our principal investigator editing one entry it's called Neuromathematics and after three hours of editathon they had agreed to include one word <laughs> <laughs> say I said okay we are not going on this space <laughs> I'm speedy so the way we are doing it is we basically have these people that are funded by FAPESP to be our fellows and then they create on their sandbox the sandbox is a test page with a student of mathematics they create based on the students knows and what the journalists know how to communicate they create a first version and then we go and we are definitely a pain not only to the professors but also to the advanced grad students in which okay now you're reading this and then they don't read we go again and again and now they know they need to read it because we are putting it uh, online but what is very interesting about and then I know this is being recorded but uh, you guys okay raise it is there is a paper that I really like and I use it a lot as propaganda for scientists that says that if you include uh, a reference to a paper a recent paper to Wikipedia and the paper is good cannot be a bad paper and the paper is good you have a significant increase in your level of citation <laughs> which is a very powerful argument not saying we are doing it but I very often use this argument about how scientists should yeah I have the paper okay I have the paper I don't know the examples but another part of it is especially for the CPs or IDCs you guys know when the international committee comes it doesn't it's not about evaluating science it's about, it's about evaluating the three branches of activities so this is and this is why I think what we are doing is especially 
compatible structure of our, an RIDC is we are judge on science, on technology transfer, and on dissemination. And you could lose money if you are not responding to the expectation in dissemination. So, of course, it's a complex issue. Of course, the main line is science, but this is spinning, and I think this is an important contextual part of what is expected from us. But I wanted Liana to show you something that the Wikidu has created that makes way easier the way to manage programs on Wikipedia. Yeah, so we have a software tool that we call our dashboard, which is how we are able to support the significant number of students that we do. And I don't know if this is just coming uh, up. Okay. Um, so, so how we were able to do this is um, we have a assignment design wizard that sort of gives instructors choices about their classes. And um, I just pulled up in the case, this is a stable isotope biogeochemistry class at Caltech that participated in the class uh, in our program last term. And, or I guess, is perhaps in the, in the, uh, a year ago, it looks like, uh, last spring. So so we walk each of the students through sort of week by week based on the dates of what they need to do. And then we have a series of online trainings here, too, that this, that walks the students through sort of the, the most important parts of, um, of learning how to edit Wikipedia. And so this has really revolutionized for us the ability for us to support uh, significant numbers of students. We're currently in the current term right now. We're supporting 7,000 students. Um, as they edit Wikipedia, and we have two full-time staff members who look over the work of the students. So um, our technology platforms like this have been really helpful in enabling us to scale the pack that we're having. And, yeah. So, so it's it's sort of like a learning management system. Um, we created our own platform. It sadly does not talk to Moodle or um, Coursera or Blackboard or Canvas or I'm not sure which ones you guys use here. Um, we, we have a wide variety of them in the United States. Um, it does not integrate with uh, other learning management systems, but it's pretty similar to a learning management system in the sense that, you know, the students have a week by week um, assignment of what they're doing. There's then a list of all of the students who are enrolled in the class and then it pulls the articles that they are actually working on, um, show how many page views the articles received as well. Um, and then it, this activity feed won't show anything because it's not class, but it, it showcases sort of what you're doing on Wikipedia and so it makes it very easy for, um, for uh, the instructor as well to see what the student, this one's actually not going to be that interesting, it's a new article, but you can see graphs then um, showing the changes that of course now is not going to work because that's what happens with live demos but um, you it, it can showcase sort of what happens that and what student did specifically to the article yeah what article is validated by the teacher is uh, published by the way in Wikimedia it's or published Wikipedia, it's sorry. published on Wikipedia prior to the instructor valuing it. Um, so like everything on Wikipedia, students add content and then the instructor takes a look at it. Um, we do, we offer a significant peer review section as well. So we encourage all of our instructors to have, to assign their students to do a peer review of someone else's work as well to do a sort of first round of, um, of catching of any errors or things like that. And um, we ask the instructors to obviously review it in the process of grading and, you know, to, to flag for us any changes. Um, but Wikipedia is an active community of editors, and so some students will have a random person from somewhere else jump in and provide comments to them on their draft that they had no idea that would happen. And that, I, I would say that happens rarely. I don't want to give the impression that every student will always have to give them comments, but it certainly happens fairly frequently. So. Cool. Aliane va continuar. Okay. 